Now you can go. Hi everyone. Hello. How you doing? Welcome to Cooking with Pat and Joe. Today we are going to um, show you some easy side dishes for the holidays. And they are easy. We're going to make three of them today. And the nice thing is not only are they fast and easy and delicious, but they're not going to use your oven. So right. if you're cooking a turkey, you don't have to worry about when am I going to get the sides in or whatever. And the first one we're going to do is a Brussels sprouts with bacon. Joe, you want to tell us sure. about that? This is a recipe that we got from, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Jacques Poupin, um, who is a classic chef, French chef, who worked for Howard Johnson's for many years. And he is one of my favorites. Pat gave me his... Uh, Turn me on to him. This is one of the dishes that he prepares. It's very simple, it's very easy. First thing you want to do is get a few slices of bacon, um, about two ounces, maybe three, four slices of thin bacon. And you just want to cut it so it, it's just little strips, okay? And what the reason for this is we want it to cook pretty fast. We're not going to get it to be real crispy, but we're going to get the bacon fat, which is you know, unfortunately that's not healthy for you, but it's also really good for you. And we're gonna put the bacon into a frying pan. So Joe has his cast iron pan there already. The cast iron pan is already hot. Can it sizzle? Here, yeah, that's you do get sizzle. I put about a tablespoon of oil in it, olive oil, just to get it started. You don't want to put it into a dry pan. Now the bacon, we're gonna let this sizzle up for a while. I have it on medium heat, medium high. We're going to let that sizzle up for a little bit. And while we're doing that, you, you want to slice up your Brussels sprouts. We're going to let that go for a little bit. You want and, to walk over here, Tim? And we can do the Brussels sprouts in halves and quarters. Depends how big they are. These are a nice size, aren't they? These are a great size. The way I like to do Brussels sprouts, and I prepped some of them already, is Slices. And what you do is, you know, you, you take off the bottom part, you remove some of the, the leaves that are a little darker in that. And then what I like to do is just slice them into little rounds. You know, Brussels sprouts are like little cabbages. And so they have all these great, this great flavor in these leaves. And Brussels sprouts are one of my favorite vegetables. Not so much our photographer, Tim. Nope. He never liked the mess growing up. Um, you know, for a long time, people really didn't like Brussels sprouts, and then they became extremely popular. Yes. Very gourmet right now. So your palate is My very gourmet. Is over here. Yes, our palate is very <laughs> gourmet, you know. That's because that's what we, that's how we roll, right? Now remember, we do this, we're doing this cooking show for the YM, the Hillcrest YMCA, Pat, um, can give you a little bit more information about that. That's right. We used to do a live cooking show and at the Y and be able to give out samples and stuff. But with COVID right now, we're not able to do that, so we're doing it online. We hope to do it in the future. If you like us, we'd love for you to put a like on. Yep. Come to the Y. We're going to be doing a coat drive, coat and hat drive in December for Y Haven. If you are cleaning your closets now, getting out winter coats, think about us. Um, we do a lot of nice things, and doing this now with Joe has been even nicer, so I hope you're all enjoying it. We're having fun. Okay, so the bacon is sizzling a little bit. You want to come back here and look at this. I'm going to let this go for another minute or two, getting some brown edges on it. What's really nice about this is we're getting some really nice um, bacon fat, the grease. It's all rendering out. Yeah, it's rendering the fat. And that's going to be really good when we put the bacon out of the Brussels sprouts into it. It's going to add that flavor. Tim, don't you make bacon? Uh, yes. So, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to talk about some <laughs> homemade bacon at some point. Tim's bacon is pretty good because it does different flavors. Mm -hmm. You're the only guy I know who makes bacon, so I'm, I'm extremely impressed by <laughs> What do you think, Pat? I think that's looking good. Okay. Look at all that nice fat that we have in there. you see the fat in here? Mm -hmm. So we could do two things now. If it was crispier than this, we would take it out. 
if right. it be, but we're gonna let it continue to cook with the Brussels sprouts. So it goes right in. Just give it a nice little toss. We're gonna put some salt. Can you give me the salt and pepper? Absolutely. We're gonna put a little bit of um, pepper, not a lot of salt because the bacon is in there. Um, but we're gonna put some salt in here. I mean pepper. I am a big, I love pepper. My husband loves pepper too, it adds a lot. And you're right, the bacon has a lot of salt to begin with. We can always add a little more salt if we want to. So we want to be sparing, but we can't take it out. So. Right, so I'm just going to put one grind in it. And, and the salt not it. only adds flavor, but it helps draw out moisture. So you get a crispier product when you salt something a tiny bit. And that's important, because we, we want to get a nice crisp edge so, to it. Exactly. Now, what we do, let them push them down in the pan, put a lid on them. Now, if your Brussels sprouts were bigger than that, you could add a tablespoon or two of water. And right. that would steam it and make it go faster. And I might add a little bit of water to and this. And we can always see. In a little bit. It just depends. We'll take a look. But some of those Brussels sprouts are like the size of small tangerines yeah. or something. And they, they may need a little help. If you were using your oven, you could put that pan in the oven at about 400 degrees. Exactly. So meanwhile, you see we have another pan going here, and that's our mashed sweet potatoes. So while this is cooking, let's talk about that. Most of the holiday dishes with sweet potatoes are heavy on brown sugar, and they're heavy on marshmallows, and they don't taste anything like a sweet potato. And that's what I love about this, both because it really tastes like sweet potatoes and it's relatively healthy yeah. for a, for a um, mashed dish. It also cooks very quickly. When you boil a sweet potato, you're just adding a lot of water. There's a lot of water in this already, so we don't need to do that. What we added to the pan was just our sweet potatoes, a little bit of butter, a little bit of heavy cream, and, and the recipes will all be online right. by this afternoon. But we put like a two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of cream, a little bit of salt, and only one teaspoon of sugar. Because this is a sweet thing already. We don't mm -hmm. need to we don't need to add all that. We put no water, covered the pan, and you can see it's starting to steam. That's because the liquid and the butter and the the water, I mean the, the cream the cream and the sweet potato are steaming and it will cook extremely fast. And to make it cook even faster, I want to show you how we cut it. So I, I peeled the sweet potato. I took the ends off. This is a recipe, by the way, from Cook's Alice Illustrated from about 1990, and I think it's like one of the best they ever did. I peeled it, I cut it in half, and then I cut it in quarters. And we're going to cut very, like quarter inch slices. And the beauty of that is there's so much surface area, it cooks really mm -hmm. fast. It's an easy, easy um, chop. You don't have to do any fancy dicing. And when we're done, it will be almost ready to just mash. There's nothing else we're going to have to do to this. So we Pat's cutting this up. I can smell the Brussels sprouts are cooking. Um, you can smell the, the, them browning. I am going to put a little bit of water in it, about two tablespoons. Um, of water just to get them to not burn and also to steam a little bit. And at this point, water is what, what we're using because we want to keep that bacon flavor. But you could also put in a couple tablespoons of lemon juice, a couple tablespoons of beer, a couple tablespoons of balsamic, some kind of liquid, wine. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take a look at these sweet potatoes. And you oh, can wow, they're see they're soft. almost soft already. Was this been about seven, eight minutes yeah, not at even. most? So I'm going to give it just a minute or two more. We're not adding anything to it that we're not going to eat. We don't have to drain. We're going to mash it right in this pan and put it in the bowl to serve. And as I use <laughs> my knife like a pointer. <laughs> I hope you can see how easy and quick these recipes are. I'm going to put these in here for you. Um, we did some prepping only because some of the prepping and we'll put a, we'll put a little video on on how we prepped um, these both these dishes but it takes some time to clean the bro uh, brussels sprouts it takes some time to peel the potatoes and to cut them 
and we wanted to show you how to cook them. And that's the reason that we are prepping a little bit before, but we will show you how to prep, so don't worry about that. And truly, the two of us working together, so it's two people, but we started about 10 minutes before yeah. the show, so it's not, it's not something you have to do all day. You could also do all of this prepping the night before. You could have that cut, you could have this cut, you could have the sweet potatoes ready, so everything just goes you know, on the so fresh. Thanksgiving, usually, not in a usually. COVID year, is usually a big, huge family event, and you have a lot of people at your house. Well, obviously, this year, we're probably not going to have a lot of people at the house. I know our family, we're just doing my immediate family and my kids who are in our bubble. And what's nice about prepping for a large family is that the night before, you can slice your Brussels sprouts, same. put them in a bag or a bowl, put them in the refrigerator. You can do your green beans the same way. You can do your sweet potatoes. Everything's ready, and all you have to do is put it all together. Which makes your life so much easier. Oh my gosh, yeah. And even not for the holiday, just for your normal life. Mm -hmm. It's nice that you can get something done, come home from work, and maybe have it all, all this care. ready to go. And that's why I love this next recipe. We, we use our microwaves mostly to reheat and to put stokers, frozen dinners, and yeah. light lean cuisine and stuff in. It's actually extremely good for vegetables. And this is my favorite way to do green beans. It works with asparagus, I do it that way too. And um, broccoli florets. So all we've done is rinsed off the green beans and lined them up. One end has a stem, one end doesn't. Now, who knew there was fashion in food? <laughs> the old way to, to serve green beans was you take both ends off and you'd have two cut ends. Yes. Nothing wrong with that if you like it. But now the big thing is, the growing tip is the most tender part of the green bean. I don't know if people really know as they're eating it, but it actually makes it easier because all we're taking off is the stem. So when you see these nice um, pointy things, you know that it's a fashionable dish. For You're what it's worth. Did you ever think that we'd be all about fashion? <laughs> nope. I'm sure as my husband and your kids are eating this that they're not saying, yeah, oh no. good, you made the green beans in the right. They look like fashionable <laughs> green beans. I'm putting it in the serving bowl that we're going to use. I put, this is about a pound of green beans. I put one tablespoon of butter, a sprinkling of salt, and one clove of garlic. Um, since I just rinsed it, there's a little water still on it. We don't need to add any more. We're going to cover this tightly with plastic wrap. I am not a good plastic wrap person. That was better than I thought. Sometimes I get it so tangled. But we're going to cover it tightly because we want it to steam in the microwave. How long you put this in depends on your microwave. Is this a real strong? No. OK, let's put it in for like six minutes. Got it. And it also depends, some people like their vegetables soft, some like them crispy, but six minutes tends to be about right to check, oh my gosh, doesn't that look beautiful? These are done. And they're, and they're beautiful. See the brown? That's what you want, a little bit of the brown. So that, you look, that, that taste, that, that char, gives it a very good taste. It tastes a little bit. Then you can decide if you need more seasoning. This would be the point if you wanted to. It would be gilding the lily. I wouldn't touch that. But no. you could always sprinkle some maple syrup or some balsamic vinegar. Nice thing about the cast iron pan is that's going to stay hot in there too while we're getting ready. All right. Do you want to you try one? Am I going to burn this up? It's hot. So be careful. Mm. Oh, it's perfect. Again, instead of like an hour in the roasting in the oven. I think that's the fastest I've ever seen sweet, sweet potatoes, potatoes cook. You, you wouldn't think that would happen. No, not at all. So we're going to take that off the heat. Now the interesting thing is, of course, the butter and the milk and the cream and the seasonings are already in there. So all we have to do is, is it okay to put this on here? Yeah. I brought a masher with me. This is my favorite one. 
What's special about it is that it's curved, so it actually goes into the sides of the pan. You see, there are also very many different kinds there of are. potato mashes. And this will go in the sides too. What you don't want is the square ones because right. you'll never get it. And you see how tender they are and how quickly. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Isn't that something? Who would think you could do mashed sweet potatoes? In 10 minutes. And it tastes luxurious because you have a little bit of butter that you want for them. And one teaspoon of salt, of sugar. Now, if your family really likes sweet, you could always put in a little more. Same with the salt, same with the cream. But this is... I like I like sweet potatoes a little more savory. I do too. Not with you know, the kind with the marshmallows and the brown sugar. Oh, yeah. It tastes like candy to me. Yeah, that does not seem like part of you. So I have a bowl here. Let's put this in because this is actually ready. Can you bring me a bowl for the Brussels sprouts yes. too. I'll put some of this in here. Okay. I'm just putting a little serving bowl out. Desire, you could put another pat of butter on it, you could add more flavorings, you could um, use brown sugar if you wanted, but you don't have to do any of those things because it tastes pretty darn good right by itself. That's pretty fast, isn't it, John? That is very fast. <laughs> Faster than I think I've ever cooked sweet potatoes before. And we have one pan. We have one pan there and a serving bowl. And with our green beans, we're not even going to have a pan because we put it in the serving bowl. And we have two minutes left on that. So let's. You can see how fast these dishes came to be. It's it, This is what you need when you're doing a Thanksgiving meal. You don't want to be bogged down in the kitchen. You want to be with family. You want to be with friends. This is the best way to do it is to get everything ready and cooked in no time at all. In no time at all. And they're delicious. You don't have to sacrifice wonderful taste to be healthy. I'm, I have yeah, to. I want to. I want to get your, see you go in on this. I'm a little wimpy. I have to wait till things cool a little more. <laughs> oh it tastes like sweet potatoes. It doesn't taste like those brown sugar or marshmallow. No, those are great. They, it tastes like sweet potatoes. And it's got just enough I creaminess. Would, yeah. So even if it wasn't a holiday, these are two nice side dishes that you could do very quickly as you're sauteing your chicken or grilling a steak on the grill or something mm -hmm. like that. Get it done very, very fast. And we are Do we have any questions? No? Not yet. <clears throat> Five people watching right now. Five people, that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching, guys. It's hard to cut, get on live, I know that myself. Yeah. That's so, why we like to we and, put them on there. And we know lots of you watch later, so we're happy whenever, but it's nice to have you here. And thanks to Tim, I think we have sound and everything. Yeah. I haven't gotten any complaints questions. yet, unlike the last couple of weeks. No complaints? <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> Everyone can see you and hear you. It's amazing. So we, won't, we won't punish Tim this week. The camera's facing the right way. So he, <laughs> you know, it took us a while, but we got all the kinks out. At least we think we did. We'll probably find some more, but we're yeah. doing darn good, you know. And so this is just about done. It is. And we'll take a look at it, and you can decide if you, like I say, if your family likes very, my father-in-law loved really soft. Oh, see, I like crisp. I, I like a little more crisp, but this is very easy to adjust. It's also very easy to put more in, less in. The sweet potatoes, double if you want to. It will take a little, obviously, if you have a bigger pot, it will mm -hmm. take a little bit longer. but. The, like we're coming down. Here we go. Okay, so you can see the steam has puffed it up. Everything has stayed in there. Now this will be hot when you take it out. And you, you'll know your, when you open it up, be careful there is steam here. You can even stay for a minute or two. I have cooked these ahead of time while I'm waiting for dinner and it stays nice and warm in here. With the lid on, yeah. yeah. But I am being quick about it. Well, let's see. It smells. That smells so really good. 
this actually is a pretty, to me, it's got some softness to it, but it's not crisp. Mm -hmm. It's hot, Joe. It's really hot. Perfect. Isn't it? Who knew you could cook in a microwave and have a side dish that you could have blanched and sauteed and it wouldn't have come out better than that? Works great with asparagus. Works great with little pieces of uh, broccoli florets, snow peas, anything that's not too big and heavy. So there you go. There you go. Get Here you is our three simple, easy holiday side dishes. Brussels sprouts with bacon, green beans with garlic and a little bit of butter, and our sweet potatoes with butter and just a little bit of cream and a tablespoon of sugar. Teaspoon. teaspoon Even better. A teaspoon of sugar. Thank you all for watching. These, we're going to try to do a little bit of short vignettes like this. We're going to be doing some appetizers for Christmas next. Um, and we may even show you a little bit more uh, of how to cook a whole meal. Um, entree, yeah. sides, and I don't know, Pat's great with even desserts. Even some baking, so. yeah. We've, so, we've got a lot in the works for you, so we hope you'll come back and join us again. So we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you taste it. Have a great holiday if we don't talk to you before. We're thankful for you being there. Thank Thanks you guys. Thanks for showing up. Bye-bye.